The Lone Ranger is quite possibly the most underrated game for the NES. It's an action-adventure with a western theme that seamlessly blends together many different gameplay styles. Sometimes you'll run and gun like in Contra, while other times you'll explore treacherous dungeons like in The Legend of Zelda. You'll visit towns to interact with the local people, and occasionally you'll even blast outlaws in a 3D shooting gallery. This game has everything you could ever want from a Nintendo game, but at the time of this recording, The Lone Ranger was listed at number 374 on crowdsourced rating site Ranker.com, and of the 678 officially licensed NES games released in North America, you'd be hard-pressed to find a better game that fewer people have played. So what happened? The Lone Ranger was developed by Konami, one of the most famous Japanese development studios that brought us mega-hits like Contra and Castlevania. It was created by a team called Ku Neru Asabu, which translates to Eat, Sleep, and Play. I don't recommend googling that, but this was the team that was assembled to make Turtles 3 The Manhattan Project, and while they dropped the name Eat, Sleep, and Play, Several of the team members would go on to make Zen the Intergalactic Ninja. The game came out over 20 years before the movie that stars Johnny Depp as the Lone Ranger's Native American sidekick Tonto, so the game is based on the television show that first ran on ABC from 1949 to 1957. It tells the story of John Reed, a member of the Texas Rangers, law enforcement agents tasked with investigating crime in the lawless Old West. When Reed's division is ambushed by outlaw Butch Cavendish, and all of his fellow Rangers are slain, John dons a black face mask and vows to get revenge. To up the ante for the game, Cavendish has also kidnapped the President of the United States. Are you a bad enough dude to rescue the President? To track down Cavendish, John will be aided by his sidekick Tonto and his legendary horse Silver. For the 3D shooting portions of the game, you have the option of using the Zapper light gun for a truly immersive experience. Of course, the back of the box recommends using the Konami Voice Command Optical Targeting Headset because nothing makes you feel more like a cowboy than a head-mounted laser cannon. The game was released in August of 1991 and sadly was not a big hit. So what went wrong? I think that the Lone Ranger license actually worked against this game. Companies like LJN had made people wary of licensed games, and in 1991, the average age of a Lone Ranger fan was somewhere around 100. While the show was still technically in syndication, I can't say I ever went into school and said, Hey other kids, did any of you catch the Lone Ranger this morning at 4am on Nick at Night? You know, it was on between the Monsters and Mr. Ed. So I'm not sure who the target audience for this game even was. Well-meaning grandparents? Nursing homes? Funeral parlors? It's a shame that most people miss this game, because it's one of the best adventures on the NES. If the developers had stripped out the licensed elements and just called this game Wild West Adventure, I think it would have been more popular. In modern times, The Lone Ranger is still a relatively obscure game that very few people know about. It pops up occasionally on lists of hidden gems, but it's never gotten the notoriety that it deserves. Modern players that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. Some of the platforming is surprisingly difficult, and if you don't know the tricks, this game's bosses will easily annihilate you. You'll be allowed to continue as many times as you want, but you only get one life before you have to restart an entire mission. But what if I told you easy techniques to make the side-scrolling stages seem simple? What if I showed you the best paths through the most confusing mazes? And what if I told you how to defeat every boss? Even Butch Cavendish himself? Well, 
On today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and check out YouCanBeatVideoGames.com for episode lists, news, and official You Can Beat Video Games merchandise. Let's get started. All right, The Lone Ranger. Before we jump into the gameplay, this game does have passwords that you can use to save your progress. You can only go back to the very beginning of each mission using these passwords, but there's a secret password you can use if you want to get a major advantage. You'll notice that letters are available here, but the secret password is all numbers. It's 0810-7830-32512. And then it looks like you need to put in more characters, but you just hit OK. And this will take you to a stage select, so you can choose any of the eight missions. And you'll see that you begin with so much money that it would be hard to spend it all, as well as the maximum amount of ammo. Pretty nice. But we're not going to need any secret codes, so we're going to start up a new game, and I chose the controller option. If you have the capability of playing with the zapper, then I recommend using the zapper, but I'm not going to assume that most people that are watching this video have the whole CRT TV set up so that they can play with the zapper. But if you do, it's a little bit awkward to get used to at first because you still need to hold the controller in one hand so that you can change directions but it's much faster to aim the zapper. So while I'm using the controller, if you have the capability of using the zapper, I do recommend using that. All right, let's get into the game. After the opening story, we're dropped off here onto the world map and we can go around to the various towns, but the first thing that we need to do is find the Lone Ranger's horse. How did he lose his horse? I have no idea. It seems like that's an important thing to keep track of. In any case, you can wander around to the different towns, but first, let's go down to the bottom of the map because that's where Silver is going to be, but he's not there right now. First, we need to head up here and go into Tucson. The cities and towns in this game are very hostile, and somehow the Lone Ranger not only lost his horse, but he also misplaced his gun. The women that you run into are friendly, but any men that approach you are not trying to sell you something. Beat them to death with your fists and steal their lunch money. Once we get into the gun shop, we can spend the $100 that we started the game with on a short-barreled revolver. This gun that we just bought also comes with ammo, so make sure to press select and then press the B button to load your gun with bullets. It also comes with silver bullets, but we don't need to use those just yet. They're a little bit more powerful. If you need to refill your health, the doctor can do it for $50, which seems very expensive considering that we get about $5 per person we kill. So if you want healthcare in this game, you just have to do 10 murders. Before you leave Tucson, it is very important that you visit this house. It's the second one from the right on the bottom row. Until you talk to this woman, Silver will not appear on the map and we will not be able to advance the game. So make sure that you stop in there and talk to her. Something that you should also know, if you die in this game and have to continue, everything that we've done will be erased and you'll have to do over again. So you need to be very careful not to die in this game unless you want to go through buying a gun again, talking to that woman again, all of that stuff. To get across the bridge to where Silver is, we need to stop into this house. And this guy tells us that we need a letter from the Sheriff of Dodge City before he'll let us across. Great. So this begins a good old video game fetch quest. Meeting with this guy at the bridge house is an important thing that you need to do to advance the story. So make sure that you meet with that man before you come up here to Dodge City to visit with the sheriff. 
here in Dodge City, remember that men are very dangerous, and this is a shoot first, ask questions later kind of place. Make sure that you don't shoot any of the women in town though, or you'll lose a lot of health and half of your money. The only thing we need to do here in Dodge City is visit with the sheriff, tell him that yes, we do want to hear what he has to say, but he has something that he needs us to do first, and that's stop a band of outlaws in the western craggy mountains. There's really not a whole lot going on here in Dodge City. There's a standard gun shop, as well as the same kind of doctor that you'll see anywhere else. But if you have a little bit of money, it might be a good idea to stop in here and stock up on bullets. Once you have enough ammo and have spoken with the sheriff, we can get out of Dodge, and you'll see that a new action scene has popped up in the lower left corner of the map, but before we can go over there, we'll have to go through this band of outlaws. When you're in these overhead action scenes, you want to try to attack the enemies at a 45 degree angle. They can shoot in 8 directions as well, but they're not as good at shooting on the angles as you are. When you get about halfway down, the enemies will take two bullets to kill instead of one, and there's an easier way to get through this set of outlaws that I'll reveal later in the video, but for now, it's good to try to kill them so that we can get some money. Once you get past them, we're going to head over here to the outlaw cliffs, and this is the first side-scrolling action scene in the game. Just like in the overhead areas, you can aim in multiple directions in these side-scrolling zones, so if there's a guy throwing barrels at you high up on a ledge, aim up and shoot at him. Make sure to pick up the money, and you can also shoot downwards at enemies, which is another good thing to try. If you're on a thin platform, you can press down in the jump button to drop through it, and you can shoot through a lot of the thinner platforms as well. So if you see a guy above you, you may just want to shoot straight up and take him out before you get up there. Some of the jumps in this area are difficult, and I recommend trying to walk until the front boot of the Lone Ranger is off the edge of the platform before you make the jump. You need to kind of get used to doing that because they are going to expect you to make some long jumps in this game. And right now, if you miss the jump, you just have to kind of climb back up a little bit. But later on, it could be life or death. Make sure to pay attention to how many bullets are in your gun, which you can see in the lower right corner of the screen. Every six shots, you need to press the fire button again to reload. And here's our first boss, the purple cowboy. You can press select to equip silver bullets, and we're just going to duck and keep shooting at this guy. You don't want to shoot him too fast because he gets some invincibility frames, and every once in a while he'll duck and you would have to jump over that bullet, but most of the bullets that he shoots are standing up. Now that we've defeated the purple cowboy, we can go back to Dodge City and get that letter that we need from the sheriff, but there is a third city here in Area 1, so let's take a quick diversion up here into Carson City. This part is totally optional. Up here in Carson City, there's a mini game that we can try, and it's a firing range. It costs $10 to do, and it's a lot easier if you have the zapper gun. But if you don't, you'll want to take your first six shots towards the middle. All six of the first bullets go here and make sure that you reload. After that, it gets a little bit more difficult. There's 18 bottles to shoot at, and as long as you hit at least 10 of them, you won't lose money. But you need to hit all 18 to really make good money on this. You'll end up with $50 if you can hit them all. You're probably not going to get rich here at the firing range. You'll make money a lot faster by just doing a bunch of murders, but if you want to play a fun minigame, they have it here in Carson City. Now that we checked out the firing range, we can visit a few of the people here. This is all optional, but it seems like word hasn't traveled very fast about the president being kidnapped, and that's a little bit concerning. You'd think that even back in the 1880s, people would know if something happened to Chester Ray Arthur. We can switch back to our regular bullets, but you'll see that we'll still be firing silver bullets until we actually reload. Up here, we can buy a ticket for a train, but we can only go to Tucson, which is about a 5 second walk from here. I'm sure it's very far in real life to actually walk to Tucson, and we would definitely want to take the train for $25, but in the context of this game, it doesn't make a lot of sense. 
There's a gun shop and a doctor around here and apparently a woman that we've met before, but she's going to be mad that I can't remember her name. Before she tries to talk to us anymore, let's get out of there and head back to Dodge City to meet up with the sheriff. Remember, as soon as you get into Dodge, there's a guy that'll try to attack you, so give him a quick shot and take his money. We'll make our way over here to the left where the sheriff's office is. He asks if we want to hear what he has to say. Um, yeah, that's why we're here, Sheriff. We didn't take care of all those bandits to not get the letter we need to get across the bridge. Might I remind you that the president has been kidnapped? And that's essentially the end of Mission 1, but before we go on to Mission 2, it's a good idea to go down to the gun shop and stock up on ammo, because there are no checkpoints in the middle of missions, so if you were to die in the middle of Mission 2, you'll continue right at the beginning with whatever ammo you had at the end of Mission 1, so this could save you some time to stock up on ammo now. Also, because we don't have a lot of money to risk, if you want to see what happens when you shoot one of the women in the game, I'll show you that. See, we took a bunch of damage, and we lost half of our money rounded up. So, that's the penalty for cold-blooded murder in this game. A little bit of damage, and you have to, I guess, pay some kind of restitution. Now that we have the letter, whenever we talk to this guy, we tell him that, yes, we do want to hear what he has to say. And now he will let us cross the bridge. And once you cross the bridge to the other side, that is the end of Mission 1. So if you have any business that you want to take care of in here, make sure you do that before you go and talk to that guy and show him the letter from the sheriff. And that's it. We've done it. We've completed the first mission. Now that we have silver, our true adventure can begin. At the end of each mission, we'll see a short cutscene. hi -oh, Silver, away! And then we'll get a message from Tonto where he'll give us our password. Since we live in the future, you can just take a picture of the password with your phone, which will eliminate the problems with writing it down. At the beginning of Mission 2, Tonto says, Guess what? There's a rumor about a hidden Spanish treasure in this area. And to that I say, Guess what, Tonto? The president has been kidnapped. My brother was murdered. There's so many reasons why we shouldn't be treasure hunting right now. But when we run into this old man who tells us that we can combine three pieces of an old plate together to find the location of the gold, well, suddenly I guess that's what we're doing. The old man gives us a sob story about being robbed by outlaws, children are going to starve. I guess the president's just going to have to wait. We're going to have to recover that treasure. We can stop over here in the town of Clearwater if we need to, but it's totally optional. There's a gun shop and a doctor we can use, but if you go too deep into this town, you're going to run into enemies. So if you need to refill at the doctor or the gun shop, try to stay on the left side of town. There are two pieces of the missing plate that we need to locate, and we can find them in whichever order we choose. One of them's hidden in a side-scrolling action scene like we played in Mission 1, but the other one's over here in a 3D maze. This first maze is pretty easy. When you come to a dead end, always go to the right. Otherwise, just follow whichever hall you're in to the very end of it. So you can see that there's some branching paths to the side of this hallway. There's one over to the left of us. We want to ignore that and just go all the way to the end of this hall and just keep following it. There's a bunch of branching paths here to the left and the right. Ignore all of those. We're going to go to the end of this hall. When the enemies appear, you need to kill them before you can move on. Try to shoot the enemies before they shoot you. And if they throw knives at you, prioritize shooting those knives out of the air to prevent damage. So we're just going to keep moving here to the end of this hall. If you see that red indicator in the middle of the bottom of the screen light up in a direction that's down, left, or right, you need to press that direction and the A button to be able to move over there. So we need to press down and A to move over here. And if you don't do that, you'll start taking damage from enemies that you can't see. So watch that indicator whenever you're in a gunfight. And make sure to pay attention to how many bullets you fired so that you're not trying to shoot a shot whenever you need to reload. Sometimes it's good to count the bullets. Just count out four, five, six, and remember to reload. 
dynamite is very dangerous, so if you see someone throw dynamite at you, make sure to shoot that out of the air or you'll take significant damage. And if we just keep following this hall to the end, we're going to find that missing piece of plate. There's a few more enemies that we need to fight. Keep watching that red indicator at the bottom of the screen. Most of the enemies will pop up directly in front of you, but occasionally they'll be behind you in this area. So there's one behind us. Take out these guys. And then it's going to flip back to the other side, so we need to turn behind us again. And then we'll just continue moving along in the hallway. Later on in the game, some of these battles can disorient you, but here in Mission 2, the gunfight with the enemies should always end with you facing the direction that you started. So it shouldn't get you turned around, but you can see which direction you're facing by the little N, W, E, or S that's right next to that red indicator. Enemies will often drop money, bullets, or hearts whenever they die, so you just want to shoot at those items to pick them up. You will not be able to pick up items if you need to reload, so make sure that you reload before you shoot at the item that you're trying to pick up. Always watch that red indicator when you're in these firefights. If you're using the zapper, you don't have to press a button to change direction, but you do need to hold the controller in one of your hands so that you can change directions. Just because you're playing with the zapper doesn't mean that you don't have to change directions. That's part of this. And at the end of this hallway, we'll find what we're looking for. The missing piece of the plate. Now we just need to find the one other piece. There's technically three pieces, but the third piece is held by the old man that we met already. So we just need to find two pieces and bring them to him in the town of Clearwater. We can stop over in Clearwater to pick up more bullets and to use the doctor if you need to get your health refilled. We're doing okay on health, so we may not want to spend the money to refill our health right now. $50 just to heal two bars of health doesn't seem like a very good deal. But remember, if we die, we have to start this mission over from the very beginning, and that means we would have to do that entire maze again. So the stakes are high at this point. The second piece of the puzzle is over here on this craggy mountain. From the map, it looks like you can just cut straight across the bottom of this mountain, but eventually you'll come to a ledge that you can't jump over, so instead we need to make our way up the left side, then we'll be able to cross over the rock formation in the middle, and make our way to the lower right where the goal is. Most of the platforms here you can shoot through, so use that to your advantage and take out the enemies above you before you jump to the upper platforms. Some of these jumps are difficult, like that one. To do those difficult jumps, get some momentum and don't jump until the Lone Ranger's front foot is all the way off the platform that you are jumping from. Here's another tough one. So we'll jump whenever our front foot is all the way off the platform. Over here, we need to take out this guy across the way. He'll drop a heart, but make sure that you do another long jump to get across there. You definitely do not want to fall between those two platforms. You'll end up having to climb all the way back up the left side. Over here on the right, we just need to make our way to the bottom, so carefully drop down the platforms, run past this guy, you can jump and shoot him if you'd like, and down here, we want to shoot this guy in the light blue outfit at an angle, He'll drop a heart for us, which is nice, and then we can take out this guy from below and even jump up and grab the money that he drops. Once you drop down here, stay ducking so that you get under this guy's shot and put two standard bullets into him or a single silver bullet. We're going to want to switch to silver bullets for the boss. This boss, the knife juggler, is very easy. He jumps whenever you shoot at him, so if you get it about this distance and shoot at an upward angle, he'll jump right into your bullet. It only takes four silver bullets to take out the knife juggler, and then he'll drop the second piece of the plate. Now we just need to take them back to the town of Clearwater and give them to the old senor. Remember that you can get the pieces of the plate in either order, so if you find the platforming more difficult than the 3D maze, you may want to do the craggy mountain first. Back here in Clearwater, use the docker if you need it. We're going to make our way all the way to the right side of the map here and go in the very last house. That's where the old man lives. 
Watch out for the enemies. We still had a few silver bullets in our gun, making those guys very easy to take out. If most of the enemies in an area take more than one shot to kill, it's definitely better to have the silver bullets on. They cost twice as much money as standard bullets, but if you have to use twice as many standard bullets, you're not really saving any cash. It's like if I told you you can buy one hot dog for the price of two and get the second absolutely free. Well, once you've talked to the old man, that's going to open a new overhead action area, and this one is on the right side of the map. So we'll just head out of town and make our way over to the right. And you can see there it is. Inside this cave is a new type of action area. This is that more Legend of Zelda Star Tropic style of action. So we're going to be playing from an overhead perspective, and the best way to deal with enemies in the overhead perspective is to try to shoot them at an angle or come at them from a spot where their bullets will go over your head, but yours will hit them in the legs. So that's two different strategies that you can use. You can also get cover from the rocks and stuff inside the cave, but you can see that those two moves, the 45 degree attack and the one where you're kind of shooting at their legs, are your two most effective strategies. There's a lot of money to be had in here by taking out the enemies, so make sure to pick up the cash that they drop. We're going to need a lot more ammo moving forward, so we definitely need that paper. Keep working your way through. Up here, we can head over to the right if you need a heart. So if you've taken some damage, we'll be able to find one of those guys wearing a light blue outfit. And that usually indicates that they might be dropping a heart. So there he is right there. Take him out and pick up the heart that he drops. That's a good way to replenish your health. From here, we're going to work our way to the left. The treasure is hidden in the upper left corner of the map, so that's generally where we're trying to get to. Make your way up this hallway. This guy in the dark blue outfit will not drop a heart, but if you head up here, we can find a heart from this guy in the light blue outfit. And that's a dead end up there, so we're just going to head back this way. Make your way down at this fork. Over to the left is a dead end. Watch out for the enemies down here at this corner. Try to take them out in an angle. Pick up the cash that they drop and just keep following the path along. From here, there's not too many branching paths and most of the ones that you see will lead to a very quick dead end. So if you go the wrong way, it shouldn't be too hard to recover. Try to get this guy at an angle. Watch out for the one that's coming up behind. Go down here and give him a couple shots. We have a lot of money now. $367 is going to buy a lot of bullets, so that's going to be really good when we get to mission three. Up here, you should be able to hit that guy at an angle whenever he moves up. And then work your way around here. We're almost to the end now. Just up at the end of this hallway, you'll find a treasure chest. And that's it. We've discovered the Spanish treasure. Before the mission is officially completed, we do need to return to Clearwater and go back to the house on the far right side of town. That means that if you don't have much health left, you could get killed by the enemies in town and that would be a total disaster. So if you're anywhere near dead, make sure that you stop at the doctor first. You'll get a full set of health whenever you finish the mission, but the last thing that you want here is to die before finishing the mission because you'll have to start over from the very beginning. Once you get in here and say yes to this guy though, you're in the clear, and we have completed mission two. As we leave mission two behind, we give the village elder one of our trademark silver bullets. It's sort of like the Lone Ranger's calling card. Meanwhile, the president has been kidnapped and is in great danger. That's what I've been saying all along. We probably shouldn't have stopped for this treasure hunt, but now we must hurry and continue our journey. Hurry up, Lone Ranger. Pio Silver, away. Before we head off to Mission 3, Tonto will give us our password, so if you want to save your game, take a picture of that. 
and then we'll be done with this chapter. If you thought the previous mission was big, mission 3 is even bigger. We're going to need to catch a train over in Laredo to get to the next area, but before that train will come, we're going to need to rid this region of three outlaws. As we follow the path along, we'll run into some outlaws along the road, but these are not the three specific outlaws that we need to kill. You've seen this action scene before, and now I'm going to show you the easy way to do it. If you just head all the way to the left and then quickly run down the left side, none of the enemies will hit you and you'll easily be able to slip through. The first city that we need to visit is this one. This is Albuquerque. There's a lot of enemies in Albuquerque and all we need to do is go inside any of the buildings here. So while it might seem like this woman doesn't have a very useful tip for us, if we enter her building and then quickly exit Albuquerque, when we head back this way towards El Paso, we'll get this message from Tonto. Getting that message from Tonto will allow us to visit the sheriff in the town of El Paso and get a quest from him. If we didn't get that message from Tonto, whenever we visit the sheriff here, he wouldn't give us the quest and it wouldn't unlock all the different stuff that we need to do. Before we do that though, over here in the gun shop you can buy the medium barreled revolver and that's going to give us better range than our short barreled revolver, so you'll certainly want to buy that for $200. It doesn't come with ammo this time though, so make sure to stock up on ammo with whatever money you have left. After you've purchased the medium barreled gun, we'll go to the sheriff, and we certainly want to hear what he has to say. It looks like this region's being terrorized by three outlaws, and one of them injured the sheriff. It seems that the Lone Ranger is going to have to help out. We're going to be able to choose between which of the next two things that we do. We could either go to the hotel in Albuquerque, or we can go down to Walnut Grove and do a side-scrolling action scene there. That's what we're going to do first, but while we're here in El Paso, there's another minigame we can check out. This one is poker. The least amount of money you can bet is $1, and the most is $10, which is the price of one clip of bullets, so not a very high stakes game. I recommend throwing away any cards that you don't have pairs for. If you don't have any matches, you may want to keep an ace, because I don't think that the computer even really does a draw and just gets five random cards, so sometimes you can win just by merit of having the highest single card. Here we have a pair of jacks, so this looks like a good time to bet $10. But like I said before, $10 is not a ton of money, so we'll keep our pair of jacks and see what happens. We still have a pair of jacks, and the computer has a lesser pair, so it looks like we win again. I think the odds of this poker game are in your favor as the player, but without being able to wager more than $10 at a time, there's no good way to make a significant amount of money at the poker tables very quickly, so it's more of a fun diversion than anything. Once you're done playing cards in El Paso, we're going to make our way to Walnut Grove. I think that Walnut Grove is more difficult than the hotel in Albuquerque, so that's why I think we should do it first and get it out of the way. That way we won't waste our time if we die in there. You've seen this outlaw scene before and you know how to get through it. And you can see that there are two other ghost towns on the map, but those ghost towns don't have the boss that we're looking for in them and are really just there to waste your time. So I don't recommend visiting them, although you can if you want to. This church in the middle of town is where we're trying to go, but if you've taken any damage, there's a place in the upper right corner where we can get our health back. So if we stop up here in this house, there's a guy that's wearing a blue outfit that we can shoot for a heart. So you can come back in here as many times as you want and just keep murdering this guy for his heart. And that's a good way to keep your health high before we have to go into the next area, which is going to be a side-scrolling action scene. You'll notice that most of the enemies we've cleared here don't respawn, but try not to get shot by the guy in the window of the church before you go inside. And we're in. 
I think this is one of the easier side-scrolling stages, at least as far as the jumps are concerned, but the enemies are a good bit more vicious in here than they have been previously. So make your way to the right across the top here. You won't be able to jump over those boxes at the bottom, so make sure you take the top path. Head across here, and we're going to take that stairway in the upper corner. So take that on up to the next floor, and on this floor we need to work our way back to the left. Try to get this guy from below, he's an enemy that takes two shots to kill, and try to shoot this guy from far away. He doesn't really know what to do if you jump up in the air and shoot at him. Keep working your way over here to the left. Watch out for that guy that throws the barrel, make sure to shoot him from far away. You certainly don't want to get hit by one of those exploding barrels. The enhanced range that we're getting from the medium barreled gun may not be super obvious from watching this video, but whenever you're playing the game, you can definitely feel the difference. So you'll be happy to have that medium barreled gun, clear out the enemies on the left side here, and take the stairway up to the top floor. Now up here, if you fall down below, you may have to repeat some of the areas that you were in before, so be careful jumping here. We need to make sort of a long jump there, so that's one of the ones that you'll want to do by walking the front boot of the Lone Ranger off of the platform before you jump. You'll probably be pretty good at that by now. You can get rid of that guy that drops the heart from the far left edge of that upper platform, so that's a good way to get him without taking any damage. Once you pick up his heart though, you want to make your way back onto the platforms to get over here to the right side, and then we'll take the stairs up to the boss. We're going to duck to shoot at this guy so that we don't get hit by his shots, but whenever you shoot at him, it makes him jump backwards, and eventually he's going to be stuck against the left wall. Whenever he gets over there, just rain a hail of bullets down on this guy, and he will very quickly be killed. And that's it. We now only have two more outlaws to kill. The next one is going to be in the Hotel Albuquerque, but before we go over there, you can get that heart again in the upper right corner of Walnut Grove, so make sure that you have full health before you get out of here. There's no reason to spend $50 at the doctor when killing that guy is totally free. You can exit the town up here in the upper right corner, and we'll have to go past this outlaw again. It's kind of weird that even though we're traveling north, you still have to go down to get through the outlaw action scene. Same plan works though. Head all the way to the left and just follow the left wall downwards. Avoid those other two ghost towns and make your way to Albuquerque. If you need ammo, make sure you buy it from a different town before you come up here to Albuquerque because this town is filled with enemies and there's no gun shop and no doctor. So stop over in El Paso or Laredo if you need to use a doctor or get something from the gun shop. You'll probably want a good amount of bullets for this one because we're about to do another one of those 3D mazes. This guy that throws dynamite drops a heart. You should be able to stay far enough away from him that his dynamite won't be able to reach you, but you'll still be able to shoot him with a medium barreled gun. We want to come up to the hotel, but before you go into the hotel, you need to go into the building to the right of the hotel. If you don't go into that building first, the hotel owner won't let you inside. So we're going to stop up here in this building, and this old lady tells us that the gunslinger that injured the sheriff is staying in the hotel. So he is definitely one of the three outlaws that we wanted to kill. And whenever we talk to the hotel owner, she'll tell us that he is really something, and we should be careful when going upstairs. That's good advice, because there are a ton of enemies up here. And whenever we get ambushed by the first set of enemies, you're going to head to the east after this. So make sure after you kill the first set of enemies, that you're oriented east and headed in that direction. So that's a good rule of thumb, and that's going to make it a lot easier to get through this maze if you know that. So we killed the enemies, we're gonna turn to the right and head all the way to the end of this hall. Whenever you turn around, you have to fight some more enemies, but there's only one way we can go here without backtracking. So whenever we kill these guys, we're going to head north next. 
Ugh, got shot there. Remember to keep track of how many bullets are in the chamber. You don't want to get caught reloading. And we're just going to go up around this loop, and then we'll be able to follow this hallway pretty much all the way to the end. There's going to be a lot of branching hallways here, but we don't want to go onto any of those. You just want to go all the way to the end of the hall. And for some reason, one enemy always attacks there. Whenever you get to the end of the hall, you're going to head to the west, and that is going to take us to the end. So at the very end of the hall, you head west, and we're going to go into this room, and this is where the boss is. This is the only boss that we will fight in the 3D shooting mode. You need to kill a few enemies first though, but whenever you go over to this screen, you won't have to change directions anymore, we're just going to be fighting the boss. If you're using the controller, I recommend prioritizing shooting the TNT so that you don't take damage and just try to get in hits on the boss whenever you can. If you have the zapper, however, you can do this a lot more easily with some silver bullets. Now you may want to try that strategy with the controller. You can equip silver bullets and just try to shoot at the boss as quickly as you can, but you'll probably take a lot of damage doing that from his TNT sticks. Now if you're sensitive to flashing screens, I would look away for this part. So if you have the zapper light gun, all you need to do is equip the silver bullets, point the gun at the boss, and just see how fast you can pull the trigger. It's really that easy. I know that a lot of people may not have a CRT TV and a zapper light gun to be able to play the game in this way, but if you do, this is the one part of the game where I think it makes the biggest difference. Once both bosses have been defeated, we'll finally be able to catch that train in the city of Laredo, and not only will it take us on to Area 4, but we'll also meet the third and final outlaw that we need to kill. So this is Laredo, and watch out because there are an amount of enemies in here, but there is a doctor and a gun shop if you need it. We probably could use the doctor at this point. We really don't want to die after finishing two action scenes. You certainly wouldn't want to have to repeat all of that stuff that we've done before. And we should probably stop over here and get some more bullets, especially considering that right now we had zero clips of regular bullets available. We did have some silver bullets, so we could have leaned on those if we needed them. And silver bullets are going to be pretty good on the train. If you have a lot of money and you can afford to buy a lot of silver bullets, I do recommend it. It's going to start getting like a lot of the enemies take two hits to kill instead of just one. And we're going to notice that towards the tail end of the train. If you don't have a lot of money, regular bullets will suffice. And before we go to the train station, we need to enter this building to the left of the station and talk to this guy. Until you talk to him, we will not be able to play the action scene inside the station. So make sure you talk to him first and get this ominous music going. Now when we come in here, well, it seems that this guy wants a favor from us. So we'll need to free the train from the final outlaw. He may have even taken hostages. This is not good. So grab a ticket for Silver City and jump aboard the train. This is another one of those overhead action scenes, so remember you want to try to attack the enemies at a 45 degree angle, or try to shoot them slightly under where they are shooting so that you hit them in their like lower torso or legs. That will be the best way to take out most of the enemies in this train. Also, if you need to get right in their range, you can try to shoot them and then step away so that you can dodge the bullet that they shoot back at you. Enemy bullets are pretty slow in this game. Now these guys will walk up after they take a few shots, so just kind of wait until they come into your line of fire and take a shot at them. Those ones only take a single hit to kill. If you have silver bullets, you may want to load up a clip of those for this area because we're about to get swarmed by a bunch of enemies that take two hits to kill. But if you just have a bunch of regular bullets to work with, just remember to double tap all of these enemies on this car. So finish these guys off, take their money, and make your way to the right. There will be a few more enemies over here. Some of them, the ones that are wearing brown, take two shots to kill, but these ones that are all wearing red, they only take a single shot. 
Make sure to reload whenever your gun is out of bullets. And this guy has brown pants, so we're going to need to shoot him twice. But this guy with the blue shirt, just a single shot will finish him off. Blue pants, red shirt takes two bullets. And that's the end of the train. And here is the boss. Now, this guy's a real piece of work. He has a bunch of women surrounding him, so you might accidentally shoot one of them and lose half of your money and a bunch of health. But if you just make him walk this far to the left, you'll be able to make those hostages stay off screen. And if you stand in this position, you'll easily be able to shoot this guy, and he won't be able to shoot you back. So that's the final boss of this mission, and luckily he's easy. Because if he was hard and you died there, well, you'd have to start the entire mission over from the beginning. And that would be very demoralizing. As the Lone Ranger rides away, we find out that he didn't collect the bounty on those outlaws, and it seems like the reward was $5,000. $5,000 would have paid for a lot of medical bills and certainly purchased a lot of bullets, so I'm not sure that we made a very good decision there, especially considering that the president is at stake. And that brings us to mission four, The Imposter. It doesn't matter what city you go into here, as soon as the Lone Ranger enters any town in this region, he's gonna get arrested. Yep, I guess all of those murders finally caught up to the Lone Ranger. Which one are we specifically getting arrested for? Was it that woman that we killed in Mission 1? I knew we probably shouldn't have done that. Instead of shooting the Lone Ranger on sight, they take him to the jail in Fire Creek, and Tonto comes and frees us. So that's pretty good. It turns out that someone has been pretending to be the Lone Ranger and has been robbing the local towns. So that's why we got sent to jail? It wasn't because of all the murders? Man, you gotta be either really brave or really stupid to impersonate the Lone Ranger. Does anyone else think it's funny that we can do hundreds of murders, but a robbery that we didn't even commit is what gets us sent to jail? The Old West has really messed up priorities. And if you wanted to get treated by a doctor, or maybe visit the gun store in this area, well, tough luck. Even the women are freaked out whenever they see the Lone Ranger. He's a robber. He's a robber. Totally cool that he's a murderer. But now that he's a robber, we do not like this guy. This guy at the gun shop recommends that we go home quickly. I don't even know where home is, man. Well, in any case, there's not much we can do here in Fire Creek. We need to make our way to the town of Amarillo. But along the way, we're going to have to fight some outlaws on horseback. Remember to pay attention to that red indicator at the bottom of the screen. You will need to change directions many times during this horseback battle. And you don't want to get shot by enemies that you can't even see. That is definitely what will happen if you don't change direction in time. So make sure that you keep switching. Sometimes you shoot people from behind. That's a good way to collect some ammo or hearts or money because those guys won't shoot you very quickly. Some of these guys will actually go completely across the screen and not shoot you at all, but you won't know which ones those are unless you've memorized the complete pattern, so you might as well just shoot everybody that you see. Whenever you finish with them, make sure you hurry over to Amarillo, because sometimes that guy will respawn, and you'll have to fight him again. Now, once you get to town, we run into the imposter. Well, now we know where he's hiding, let's go get him. Considering that we just saw the imposter run in this direction, you might think that we need to follow him this way, but you really don't. You actually just need to exit this town. That's the next thing that we need to do. But I did want to mention that if you have enough money, you can buy the next gun here, but it costs $800. That's because right now in Mission 4, all the prices are doubled, and until we take care of the imposter, Anything that you want to buy is going to cost twice as much money. So hopefully you have enough bullets, otherwise you might have to suck it up and pay double price to get some ammo. We will be able to buy the long barreled gun for $400 whenever we get to the next mission, and the medium barreled gun will be sufficient for now. 
There's a trick that we can do here to skip this saddle battle, and here's what it looks like. I'm going to show it in slow motion here so you can see it again. This is what you need to do. Go up to where this cactus is and wait for that guy to line up exactly with the Lone Ranger, and then you're going to press up and quickly press down. If he walks down to where Amarillo is, you did it correctly. Then all you need to do is go all the way to the left and then walk back up to the town of Brownsville. If you did it correctly, you won't have to fight anyone at all, but if you do run into a battle, here's what it looks like. This is essentially the same battle in the saddle that we just played a few minutes ago, but now it's at night, so the colors are a little bit different. Ooh. I recommend trying to skip this, but it does take precise timing to be able to do that trick, so watch it a couple times if you want to try to get the timing down. The most important part of the trick is that you do the up and then down move right as the enemy lines up perfectly with the Lone Ranger, so you have to get that part of the trick perfectly timed, but if you do that, the rest of it's easy to pull off. If you have to fight these guys, it's not that big of a deal but you want to make sure that you quickly run to the city of Brownsville after you finish fighting them. You don't want to end up fighting a second enemy. And here it is. This is the city of Brownsville, and this is where the Lone Ranger imposter is hiding out. You can talk to the people here. A lot of the people in this town seem to think that you are the imposter, and it seems like the imposter may be helping this town out in some way with the money that he steals. So maybe he's doing kind of a Robin Hood type thing. See, whenever you talk to this guy, he says, Hey, next time, why don't you introduce me to Butch? Hmm. Does that mean that the Lone Ranger imposter is part of the Cavendish gang? That's certainly what it seems like. Up here on this side, whenever you pass that tree, you want to shoot that enemy. And then there's going to be a dynamite tossing enemy up here that you can shoot and he will drop a heart. Now, if you need to refill your health, you can exit this town and come back in. And that enemy will just continue to respawn. So that's a good place to go if you ever need to refill your health. Up here, try to get past these enemies. There's another guy that throws dynamite and he has another heart for you if you need it. Up here we're in some narrow quarters, so you want to try to shoot these enemies and then step away from the bullet that they shoot back. And this is where we're trying to go. The Imposter's Hideout. The Imposter's Hideout is the final action scene of Mission 4, so compared to the previous two missions, this one is a lot shorter. Try to take out these enemies on the stairs so that you can move up safely. And head up to this floor. You want to watch out for that guy that throws barrels. You cannot shoot through the platform that he's standing on, so you just need to avoid him. These platforms are more solid, so you won't be able to shoot through most of them here. Up here at the top of the hideout, we're going to make our way across to the right, duck to avoid the shots that that guy shoots at you, and return fire. That guy's easy to kill because you can just get on the ledge below him, as with the guy behind him. Over here, you'll want to jump over the bullets that this guy shoots, but whenever he dies, he will drop a heart for you, so that's a good opportunity to get some health back. Keep making your way to the right. There's going to be a stairway that leads down at the far end. Use these boxes for cover, and just keep heading to the right. That guy takes two bullets to kill, unless you're using your silver bullets, as does this guy in the far corner. And we're going to make our way down here. This guy you want to get right up next to and just shoot him right in the junk. Yeah, kind of brutal, but that's the best way to deal with him. Head over here to the left, take out this guy in the blue shirt from behind the boxes, and then head down the stairs. As you make your way down here, there's going to be another guy that we can shoot for a heart. He's directly below us right now, and you want to just drop off the edge here instead of walking down the stairs. That way you won't get shot while you're coming down. So take that guy out, pick up the heart that he drops, and then carefully make your way to this door. Behind it is the boss. For this boss, you want to hug the lower wall, get close to him, and just start shooting. The Imposter Ranger has adopted some sort of spray and pray strategy, and just keeps shooting straight forward. It won't take much to finish this boss off. 
As the imposter ranger takes his last breaths, he confirms that his boss is Butch Cavendish, just as we had suspected. Then he says that he's going to get us soon, and there's nowhere to hide. Well, laugh it up, imposter ranger, because the joke's on you. You're about five seconds away from bleeding out. Well, before I had said that you'd have to be either really brave or really stupid to impersonate the Lone Ranger, I guess we figured out which one that guy was. And that brings us to the end of Mission 4. Mission 4 was definitely a short one. Mission 5 is going to be a little bit longer than Mission 4, but definitely not quite as long as Mission 2 or 3. So before we move on, make sure to get your password, and then it's time for Mission 5, The Chief's Trial. As we begin Mission 5, we get a message from Tonto saying that the tribes in this area are friendly and we should be able to journey in peace. Yeah, that's easy for you to say, Tonto. You're not a white guy wearing a black mask, carrying around several buckets full of bullets, and probably covered in the blood of our enemies. I think that Jason Voorhees would look less threatening than the Lone Ranger right now. Well, before we move on, we should definitely buy the long-barreled gun in Brownsville if you haven't purchased it already. We'll now be able to buy items for the normal prices, including paying only $400 for the best possible gun. At this point, we certainly want to stock up on some silver bullets in addition to the regular ones, so make sure you get a decent supply of those. But the long-barreled gun is going to be important moving forward. It'll make it a lot easier to hit the bad guys. And I don't want to say I told you so to Tonto, but as soon as we moved up into this area, we were ambushed by the local people. And the easiest way to deal with the warriors in this area is to stay on the lower tier. Down here in the lower left corner, you only have to deal with attackers that come on the lower tier directly behind you. Everything else will miss. Now, if you're really paying attention, you can count the number of enemies. Don't count the guys that are standing there to throw the barrels. Only count the guys that are riding horses. The fourth, seventh, and tenth will be the ones that appear behind you. And you can just put a bullet right in their face and move on with your life. If you take out those three enemies, nothing else will hurt you as long as you stay down in this position. So it's really that easy. This is not that difficult. We will have to endure a second ambush, and yeah, it seems like something strange is going on. You think so, Tonto? Or do you think that we just look like an insane person? Well, up here, here's the second ambush. We can use the same strategy, but this time there's a few more enemies that pop up on the lower tier. So it'll be the second enemy, then the fifth, seventh, tenth, and fourteenth. So we already saw the second, the fifth is going to be coming up, there should be one more there, and then the next guy we're going to have to shoot from behind, so there's enemy number five. There's going to be one more there, then the next one is going to come up, number seven, so we'll blast him now. And then three more enemies until we get to number ten, so we'll just wait this guy out. There's number 9, and there's number 10. Number 10 kind of surprised me a little bit, but we only took one damage, no big deal. And then there's only going to be one more enemy that we have to shoot. It's not the next one, it should be the one after. So he's coming right up now. There he is, and that's it. So that's how you get through the ambushes. If you do get damaged or use a lot of bullets, you can go back to Brownsville to power up. There is a heart that you can easily get by going up the left side of town in Brownsville, so you don't need to spend $50 at the doctor trying to get your health back. Just go to Brownsville and get that heart on the left side. Now that we've finished the second ambush, we can move on to the Chief's Village. There's a few tribal villages here, but they're sort of like the ghost towns in Mission 3. The first one's there as a distraction, and this is the one that you need to go into. As soon as we enter the village, we get attacked, and I can hardly blame these people. It's not like we tried to negotiate with them whenever they ambushed us earlier. Make sure to use your silver bullets here. These enemies take two hits to kill, 
and if you're using two standard bullets instead of one silver bullet, you're not saving any money that way, so you might as well use the silver bullets. They penetrate the enemies, and you may even be able to kill two with one shot. Watch for them to pop out of the ground, try to stay far away and shoot them from a distance. We have the long barreled gun now, so we can do that. And we're just trying to make our way to the upper left corner. That's where we're going to meet the chief. The chief may be the only male character that we meet outside of a building in an action scene that doesn't try to kill us. So this guy says that someone named Butch came up here and said that a masked man would come and try to rob them. So this was Cavendish's doing. Huh. Alright, Tonto. Maybe you were right. Maybe these people are friendly. Now we know that the president has been kidnapped and we have a lot more important things to be doing, but this chief wants us to go find an eagle egg, so I guess we'll stop trying to rescue the president of the United States and we'll go find that egg instead. All right, this seems really important. This will get us respect from this guy. And I mean, that's way more important than saving the president, right? Now that we've completed the chief's village, a new action scene pops up at the plateau below it. But before we go in there, we're going to head back to the town of Brownsville so that we can refill our health and also use the gun shop. We can get a free heart over here on the left side, and because we have the long barreled gun now, we can easily take out these enemies that lead up to it. So go up to where this tree is, shoot a bullet, and then walk forward, and you'll hit the enemy as soon as he appears on screen. Carefully make your way up here and grab that heart, trying to avoid the dynamite, and that's a great way to get your health back without spending $50 at the doctor. We want to spend our money down here at the gun shop instead. We are going to need a lot of bullets for the next action scene, especially silver bullets. I recommend having about 20 clips of silver bullets available, and yeah, 19 is probably fine. And just buy as much ammo as you possibly can. Once you're done here in Brownsville, we're going to make our way back over to where that plateau is. And this is the final action scene of Mission 5. The Eagle Cliffs is the most difficult action scene that we've played yet, and is one of the most difficult in the entire game. These rocks rain down randomly on you at the beginning, so take your time and move slowly through here to try to avoid them. You're going to want to make your way up the right side, so get over here on the right and navigate these small platforms. When you get to the top of them, you want to take an extra jump at the top, and then a wooden platform will come falling down, and you need to quickly jump onto that log and then jump off to the left. You'll use the same log to get across here to the right. Now we encounter the birds. These birds take more hits than any standard enemy in the game. So make sure that you have silver bullets equipped, and whenever you see platforms that look more yellow than the other rocks, those are ones that are going to drop out from under you, so be aware of that as well. So these ones are safe, these ones are safe, but those next ones, not safe. And you'll need a big jump here, so make sure that your front foot is off the platform before you jump over to the right. Down here, there's an enemy that's going to come charging at you. Make sure to shoot those and keep climbing over here on the right side. There's some tricky jumps that you'll need to make over here, and you'll certainly want to unload some bullets into those birds so that they'll get out of your way. Try to take out this yellow cat before you jump up to the next platform, and remember those first two rocks are going to drop out from under your feet, so you need to make a quick jump when you get onto them. Take a big jump across there, watch out for the platforms that fall out from under you, Shoot this bird before you move forward and make sure that your front foot is way off the front edge of that platform before you jump. You should be able to take out both of those birds at once and then head across to the right. We are almost to the end here, but you need to be careful on these platforms. If you fall down, you're going to have to repeat some of them. When the chief asked us to retrieve this egg, he did imply that we should wipe out all of the wildlife on this mountain too, right? Right? Well, this boss is one that you don't actually have to kill. You really only need to climb up the platforms to get to where the egg is, 
but this bird will mess with you the entire way up there, so it's a lot easier to just try to get behind the bird and just unload a bunch of silver bullets into it until it finally flies away. So stay behind the bird, keep shooting it with the silver bullets, and eventually you'll be able to deal enough damage to it. Don't shoot it too quickly with the silver bullets because it does get a few invincibility frames between each shot, but keep up the pressure so that you can lock it in one place for more time. Once the mother eagle is gone, nothing can damage you here, so all we need to do is just climb up the platforms until you reach the egg. If you make a mistake and you fall, it doesn't really matter, just climb back up until you get there. You want to head up the right side and then make your way towards the top middle. That's the easiest way to get to where the egg is. And once you have it, that is essentially the end of Mission 5. You might think that we took a good bit of damage there, maybe we should go back to Brownsville to heal ourselves. You don't actually have to do that. Whenever you get to the Chief's Village again, it is shockingly abandoned. Considering this period of American history, I'm a little bit worried about what might have happened to all these people. But for now, just make your way up to where the Chief is, and whenever we get there, we will have finally earned his respect. Alright, we're here Chief, and we brought you this big egg. If he's just going to use it to make an omelet, I'm going to be a little bit annoyed. But he tells us to pay attention while traveling, and that's pretty much that. We've won the Chief's trust, and we vowed by our gun to defeat Butch. I mean, didn't we do that at the very beginning? And now we must be on our way. Yeah, we needed to be on our way like an hour ago. We gotta go save the president. Just like always, Tonto will give us our password, and then we'll be on to Mission 6. Missions 4 and 5 were on the shorter side, but Mission 6 is definitely a big one, and if you thought we were wasting our time in the previous missions, well, in this one, we're gonna take some time off from rescuing the president so that the Lone Ranger can visit with a girl that he's interested in. If the president ends up dead over this, I'm not gonna want to explain to his widow that the reason we couldn't rescue him is because we had to go on a date, but we're here in Abilene and that's where Clara lives, so while there's a gun shop, a doctor, even a train station if you need it, the place that we need to go in this town is the house in the upper left corner. I don't think Clara is going to like us going through her stuff when she's not home, but whenever we exit her house, Tonto sees a message from Butch. The message basically says that Butch has kidnapped Clara, and unless we want her to be murdered, we need to stop chasing him. Hmm. So how does Butch know that the Lone Ranger is any association of Clara? That doesn't make a lot of sense. The whole reason why the Lone Ranger wears the mask is so that people won't know his identity, and because Cavendish thought that he killed John Reed when he killed the other Texas Rangers, the bad guys shouldn't suspect that that's who the Lone Ranger is at all. He should sort of be like a ghost. And when it comes to taking the mask off, the Lone Ranger is like the Mandalorian. I think he sleeps with it on. Well, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but we need to head up here to Pike's Peak, and we'll be able to find out more about Clara. There's not a whole lot that we need to do here in Pike's Peak. We just need to head straight up the middle and make our way to the bar at the top of the town. So just keep heading up here and head on into this saloon, but watch out for all the enemies that congregate in front of it. There are quite a few of them, and that blue one will throw knives at you. Once you get inside though, you can talk to the people here. This guy says that we just got here. Who's we? You and this person that's sitting at another table? Are you trying to tell me that you're saving a seat for someone? I don't know what's going on. If you talk to this guy, he tells us that we should ask at the mine office in Abilene for directions, and he's the one that you need to talk to. So you need to talk to that person in the upper right corner, that's going to trigger the next event, and if you want to get out of this town easily, you should head all the way over here to the left side, and just walk straight down. It's kind of similar to when we were avoiding those outlaws earlier in the game. 
When we were in Abilene before, you might not have noticed a mine office, and that's because this is just a very big city. So before we went to the top of the city, that's where Clara's house is, but this time we need to go to the bottom, that's where the mine office is. Before we go down there, we can stop at the gun shop and pick up a few more bullets. Some more silver bullets would be helpful. And then we're going to head straight down from the gun shop and make our way over here to the right. We can talk to this woman who asks if we know Butch Cavendish the gunslinger. Yeah, we know him. We know him all right. And this building marked office, this is the one that we need to go to. Of course, we want to hear what you have to say. And this guy will tell us where the mine is. And even if we knew where the mine was before, until you talk to that guy, you won't be able to go inside. So head back up past Pike's Peak, and you'll see that there's a new action scene available. When you get into the mines, you may be surprised to find that they are infested with ninjas. That's right, I said ninjas. There's all kind of ninjas in here. Watch out for the falling stalactites. You just want to move forward slowly. You should be able to see those spawn at the top of the screen and they shake for a second before they drop. So they're not too hard to avoid. When you come down this stairway, you want to quickly head to the left so that you avoid shurikens that are being thrown from the right. And then we'll need to watch out for some more falling stalactites as we carefully move across here. Try to shoot this guy, and the jump over to the right is kind of tricky, but if you just drop straight off and head over to the left, we'll find a guy that will spawn a big heart for us, and at this point we might need it. Once you have the big heart, you'll want to climb up these stairs, but make sure to take out the ninja that awaits you on the upper platform, and then we're going to head over here to the right where we need to make this tricky platform jump. You need to jump to that one right at the last second as it's heading to the left, and when you get over here, you'll want to climb down these stairs and make your way to the right. If you fall whenever you're trying to make that platform jump, just try to hold to the left and you'll probably be able to avoid the spikes below. Whenever you're in the water here, water will slow you down, but you don't want to be jumping around too much because of the falling stalactites, but jumping will allow you to move more quickly. So. Jump around out of the water if you want to move fast, but try to avoid those falling stalactites. We are going to have to fight a boss at the end of this. Once you get to the end of that watery area, we're close to the end, so make your way to the top of the stairs, turn to the left and shoot the ninja that awaits you at the top, and then make your way across to the right. There's more falling stalactites. Take out that ninja from the ledge below, and take out this one from way below him before you climb the stairs. And when you get to the top, that's where we're going to meet the boss. This guy starts out on the ceiling, so angle a shot upwards and try to knock him off the ceiling so that he lands onto that platform, and then stay one ledge below him so you'll be able to shoot him and duck to avoid his shurikens. It won't take too many bullets to finish off the fire ninja, and once he's defeated, he'll give us some information about what happened to Clara. It seems that she's been taken to the ninja hideout. So that's where we're going to go next, but before we go in there, we are going to stop back in the town of Abilene so that we can use the gun shop and stock up on ammo. You don't really need to go to the doctor and spend your money there. At the very beginning of the ninja house, there's going to be a place that we can drop down and kill an enemy that drops a heart. And then if you need more health, you could exit the ninja house and re-enter it, and that will make that heart respawn. So you could do that a couple times if you need to get your health up. I'll show you where that enemy is as soon as we get into the ninja house, because that's where we're headed next. So make sure you have a good amount of ammo, and then make your way to this flashing star that's sort of out in the middle of nowhere. So from here, if you want to get that heart, you just want to drop straight down here and shoot that guy in the face. He'll drop a nice heart for you, and you don't want to lose your full health, so get underneath that green ninja and shoot him before you go back up the stairs. There are a lot of traps here in the ninja house, so we want to make our way across the top, jump onto this moving platform, and you may need to wait on this one for a minute until the next platform that you need to jump on lines up with it. So just wait here until you have a good jump, that looks good. 
and make your way across. If you fall down, you're going to need to backtrack and climb up the stairs to get back up here. So just keep working your way to the right. Stay on the top tier. You'll see that if you stayed on the bottom tier, eventually you wouldn't be able to jump over those boxes. So you want to stay up at the top. And then you want to watch out for those spiked chandeliers as you move across here. Make sure to take out the enemies that are ahead of you though. You may need to advance the screen a little bit so that you can see them and you'll be able to shoot them before you move forward underneath that chandelier. Grab that heart and head down here. There's another heart waiting for you if you need it. So that's two hearts. And then make your way back up to the top. So this is another trap area. You need to work your way across the top of this area, but if you fall down below, you'll need to get back to that stairway to get across. Some of these jumps are tricky, especially with the ninja on the ceiling in the way, so make sure to knock him down. Take out this green guy and keep on moving to the right. Over here, we're going to find a door, and that door leads to the boss. So once you head inside, make sure that you have your silver bullets equipped, and this time make sure that they are loaded into the gun because silver bullets are very important against the copycat ninja. He spawns two other ninjas and if you shoot with the silver bullets, your bullet will penetrate both copycat enemies and kill them and it'll also deal damage to the boss. Now when the boss throws shurikens at you, you need to jump over the first one, but it will cause them to throw the second one up in the air, so you should be able to duck under the second one they throws. As long as you have a decent amount of silver bullets, this boss should be no problem. Unfortunately, as this guy croaks, he lets us know that Clara is not here, and that she's been sent away to the town of San Joaquinto and you can see that she's trapped inside a horse-drawn carriage and heading to the right. As we chase Clara across the map, some outlaws catch up to us, and it's time for another battle in the saddle. We've done several of these already, so we kind of know what to do here. Watch that red indicator at the bottom of the screen. Whenever it's not lighting up at the top, that means that you need to change directions, so make sure to press that direction on the D-pad and press the A button to go with it. If you're using the zapper, you don't have to press the A button, you just have to press the direction, but you do still need to be holding the controller if you're using the zapper. You'll plug the zapper into port 2 if you're playing this game. So take out these enemies. Shouldn't be too many more now. Just keep blasting them. A few more on this side, and that'll do it. And we should be able to make it to San Joaquinto, but don't waste time. As soon as you get out of the battle in the saddle, head over to the right and quickly get into town, or you'll have to do it again. Once you get into San Joaquinto, you'll see that it's very similar to many of the other towns that we've been to before, but this is the very last town on the map, so this is where we're going to be coming back to if we need to use the gun shop or if we need to go to the doctor anytime during this mission and during missions 7 and 8. So we'll take our time here in the gun shop, buy a few more bullets, and then we need to make our way to the bottom of town. That's where they're holding Clara. They say that Clara is the best cow puncher in the city of Abilene, so I guess that's why they sent ninjas to kidnap her instead of cows. Those cows would have gotten knocked out. Down here there's a guy tossing dynamite. If you kill him, he'll drop a heart for you. And then I like to make my way all the way to the right side and just go straight down the right. You'll encounter fewer enemies this way. There's a whole bunch on the left side of those boxes that you won't have to deal with, although you may need to move over here and shoot at this guy straight upwards. We have the long barreled gun now, so it's a lot easier to hit guys from far away. From up here, we should be able to take out another dynamite tossing dude, and this one will drop a nice heart for us. And then you just need to head into this house. This is the ninja base. That's right, this is the third side-scrolling action scene in this mission, and this is the biggest one of the three. Make your way to the top tier, wait for this platform, and carefully make your way across. Of course, if you drop down below, it won't take too much backtracking to get back up here. But when you get over here, take out this ninja on the top and jump across. You don't want to encounter that guy that twirls the nunchucks at the bottom. He can block your bullets. 
You can drop off the edge here and then you'll be able to catch him with some angled shots from behind, but that guy is very dangerous. Carefully make your way across here until the enemy on the far right side spawns, then step backwards and shoot him before advancing. You'll want to do something similar here. Try to get that guy to show up, shoot him, and then go under that spiked chandelier. Up here you'll see a ninja wearing the blue uniform that indicates he's going to drop a heart when he dies, so take advantage of that and keep making your way over here to the right. If you head down this stairway, we'll go down into a cave. You can head all the way over here to the left to take out that ninja below. That's one of the safest ways to kill him. Make your way over here to the right. Watch out for falling stalactites. You'll be protected whenever you're underneath that rock formation. But try to drop down below and take out that ninja, and take out these other ones from far away. Many of them wield swords, and if you get too close, they will definitely let you have it with them. If you head over here to the right, you can take out this guy on the ceiling, and we'll find another enemy that drops a heart. So watch out for the dynamite that he throws, but if you need a heart, you can grab one there. But we need to go up the stairs to be able to proceed forward. The area over to the far right down here is where you'll fall to if you miss a platforming jump. So there's going to be some moving platforms up here that we'll need to navigate. Stay on the top tier, work your way across, and then head down the stairs. There's a guy up above that's throwing shurikens at you. Shoot straight up to take him out, and then jump onto this slow moving platform. You'll see another ceiling ninja that you'll want to remove, and when you jump over to this faster platform, take a shot from right here as you jump to the next one, and you'll catch that ceiling ninja as soon as he appears on screen. Try to stay towards the middle of this platform in case you get hit, you don't want to get knocked off, and then jump over to that box whenever you've cleared the ninja that's on top of it. Take out a few more orange guys, and then there's a ninja that drops a heart over right before another set of spiked chandeliers, and we know what to do here. Take out the enemies on the right side of the chandelier before you go underneath them, and this time you'll need to watch out for a few enemies that are attached to the ceiling. We're going to jump up to the right and then head back to the left. We just want to make that ninja spawn on the right so that we can shoot him before moving across, and we're going to do something similar over here. Keep trying to advance the screen until you can shoot that guy, and then go under the spiked chandelier. That bluish ninja is easy to take out with an angled shot, and at the very end we'll find the door, and behind it is the boss, the Fire Eater. Quickly head over here to the left corner, and keep shooting at the Fire Eater. Whenever you shoot at him, he's inclined to jump over you, so if you just keep shooting left, right, left, right, he'll just keep jumping over you, and you'll hit him as he lands, and then he'll jump again. As long as you can keep him stuck in that cycle, he won't be able to blow fireballs at you, and you'll have no problem defeating this boss. Once the Fire Eater is defeated, we will finally be reunited with Clara. Sadly, the Lone Ranger refuses to take off his mask, and won't even show her his face. You'd think that since Cavendish somehow already knows that Clara is associated with the Lone Ranger, I mean, that's why he kidnapped her, right? That maybe we could let her know what our secret identity is? But instead, the Lone Ranger goes the complete other way with it. He confirms to her that her old flame John and his brother were killed by Cavendish. It's a sad and somber end to this mission. But this is the way. And with a hi-ho silver, the Lone Ranger is on to Mission 7. You may have noticed that Mission 6 was almost entirely side-scrolling action scenes. Well, Mission 7 is 100% overhead action, so get ready for that. This is the Cavalry Camp. Now you may have been thinking, if the president was kidnapped, shouldn't the government have sent somebody to save him? It shouldn't just be the Lone Ranger out here. Well, they did send someone. They sent the entire US Cavalry. Unfortunately, the Cavendish gang was able to overtake them, and now they're impersonating cavalry officers. This is bad. 
To get through the gate that leads to Butch's hideout, we're going to need to infiltrate all three cavalry camps in this area and defeat a boss at the end of each one. Before we can even get in there though, we'll get a little taste of what's to come when we encounter this enemy. This is a very small area, but this is a great place to make a ton of money. Using your silver bullets, you may be able to take out two enemies with one shot, but as you approach the fence ahead, be careful. There's an enemy ahead that's manning a Gatling gun, so to defeat him, you want to go to the right of the stream of bullets, and then very slowly edge over to the left until you can make a shot that takes him out. Once you've killed the gunner, you can actually man the gun, press B to fire it, and then press A when there's a lot of money on the screen to dismount from the gun and hurry and pick it all up. You should be able to make a lot of cash doing that, and then we can head back here to San Joaquinto to spend it. It's about time we maxed out our ammo. You can hold up to 50 clips of each type of bullet and 10 sticks of TNT, so with $568, we don't have quite enough money to max out our ammo yet, but that is going to be one of our goals here in Mission 7. Most of the enemies take two standard bullets to kill in this area, so make sure to stock up on a lot of silver bullets. They're just going to be more efficient. And you're also going to want to grab a few sticks of TNT. We're actually going to need at least four sticks for what we want to do, so we'll need to come back and buy more later, but that's not the last time we're going to be stopping at the gun shop in this mission. So whenever you're out of cash, make your way back to where the cavalry camps are. You can take on the camps in whichever order you choose. I like to do the left camp first because it's one of the more difficult ones, but it also has a lot of those Gatlin gun enemies, so we'll be able to rack up a lot of money here, and we'll be able to use that to purchase more bullets. So there's one of those machine guns right at the beginning. Make sure to take out the two cavalry enemies that flank the machine gun first, then get up on it and start mowing down bad guys. Oh yeah! Mo murders, mo money. As soon as you see a lot of cash out there, run out and grab as much of it as you can. Luckily, the bad guys aren't smart enough to send enemies from behind and in front of you. That would be a lot harder to deal with. But that is definitely not the last machine gun, so make your way up the left side and when you see the next gunner, move to the middle and shoot him. You'll want to take out the enemy on the right as well, but you won't have to deal with that one on the left. He seems like he just likes to stay in one spot and just keep shooting at an angle, which does pretty much nothing. So we'll kill a bunch of his pals, take all their cash, and then if you walk straight up to the end of those boxes, you can turn and take him out before you head up on the left side. When you get up to the upper left corner, you'll notice that there's a building here. That's a trick. You don't want to go in there. There's just some more enemies that will try to hurt you, and there's nothing to be gained from fighting them, other than the cash that they drop. In this area, cannonballs rain down, so be careful of those. The explosion stays on the screen for a few seconds, and you can easily walk into it if you're not paying attention. And over here, we have our third machine gun, so you can see why I like to do this camp first. We're gonna come out of here with a ton of money. Once you're done with that gun, you wanna make your way over to the right. There's a guy there that throws dynamite, and he'll drop a heart for you if you need to refill your health. Once he's defeated though, you want to head down from the area where the machine gun was and try to take out these enemies at a 45 degree angle. You'll keep working your way down to the bottom and then we're going to head back to the left. Watch out for those cow drops on the ground. Also the landmines. If you step on any of that stuff you'll take damage, but you will take a lot more damage from the landmines. So if you had to choose between landmines and cow drops, you'd certainly rather walk on the cow drops but try not to walk on any of that stuff. Down here we can get another heart in the lower left corner. You'll also want to take out the enemy across from those spikes so that you don't have to deal with him. And then just walk around that landmine and take out these guys on the other side. Then they'll stop shooting those cannons. Of course, once you get over here you don't have to worry about the cannons anymore because inside this little house is the boss. The Red General is easy if you know what to do. Head all the way to the right, walk up to the end of those boxes, turn to the right 45 degrees, 
and just unload a few silver bullets into this guy. If you positioned yourself correctly, the enemies won't come up behind you, but if you're a little bit off, they will, so be ready to turn around and shoot those guys if they do actually come up behind. But that's it. If you do it properly, you'll easily be able to take out that guy. And with $593, let's head back to San Joaquinto and buy some more bullets. Do you think that this whole kidnapping the president plot was politically motivated? Because I can't really understand why such a powerful gang would even bother to kidnap the president. Or Clara the Cowpuncher for that matter. If I was going to do a kidnapping back in this time, how about somebody related to J.D. Rockefeller? I bet that would be a lot more profitable. This whole president scam seems a lot like step one, kidnap the president, step two, step three, profit. Well, speaking of profits, take whatever money you have and we can go to the gun shop and buy as many bullets as you can carry. We now have the full set of 50 silver bullets, and you'll also want to pick up a few more of those TNT sticks if you don't have at least 4 right now, and you'll probably want the maximum of 10 because we're going to be using them on two of the bosses in this mission. So we have the middle camp and the right camp next. The right camp is the shortest one, but there is a lot of cannonballs in here, so I don't know if it's necessarily the easiest but definitely the shortest. We'll head through here. There's a lot of enemies in this spot, so stay at the bottom and attack them tactically. You can use some of those rocks for cover. Make your way around up here, and there's another enemy with a Gatling gun. If you need some more ammo, you can take him out, but we're actually doing pretty good on money right now. We have almost the maximum amount of bullets, so we probably don't need to waste any more time with machine guns. We're gonna make plenty of money just killing people. Head around here. In this camp, you basically are just going to go all the way to the right, down a little bit, and then back to the lower left corner. That's where the house is going to be that contains the second boss. Carefully make your way around this area, and that enemy up at the top will drop a heart for you. So if you've taken some damage, this is a good time to get a bunch of health back before we fight the boss. And you need to go up and around this house. Do not exit the area to the left. You'll have to start the camp all over. Make sure you go inside here, because it's time to fight the second general. And we're going to fight him exactly the same way that we fought the red one. You can do it just the same way, and it's just as easy. So once he's defeated, we'll have the second key, and now we only have to do one more of those camps. Not bad. If you need bullets or a doctor, go back to San Joaquinto and get those things. Don't worry about spending the $50 on the doctor anymore. We should have plenty of money to pay for medical bills, and you do not want to die after you cleared two of those camps. You'll have to start over from scratch at the beginning of Mission 7 if your life bar gets fully depleted. There are a few dead ends in this area, so you want to start off by heading to the right, but as soon as you have the opportunity to move downwards, you want to head down into this winding path through the fence, and we'll take out a few enemies at the bottom. A good way to deal with some of the enemies, especially if you know they're coming, is to shoot a bullet while the enemy is still off screen, and then walk towards where that enemy is going to appear. We'll do that again down here. So there's a guy right around here. Alright, we missed, but that's okay. Just head back up, shoot, and then walk towards where the enemy will appear on screen, and it'll hit him without him even having a chance. Down here, there's a little house in the lower right corner. You might think that's where the boss is, but nope, that's a trick. You need to head back up this way instead. There's an enemy that drops a heart over here, so make sure to grab that if you need it. And then carefully weave your way through these boxes, taking out the enemies and working your way upwards. There are some narrow hallways ahead, so you may need to use the strategy of shooting at an enemy and then stepping away. And when you get to this area, you should be able to hit these guys by shooting them at an angle. They're not quite as good at it as we are. Keep working your way around the fences. This guy's a little bit annoying. You want to try to dodge his bullets if you can, but we took a hit there, not that big of a deal. The boss isn't going to be too difficult, especially if you brought those TNT sticks. So you're going to start out just like we did with the other two generals, except this time we're going to equip the TNT. 
for whatever reason, this guy seems to take a step more towards the middle, but you can use the same positioning to throw the dynamite sticks at him. Make sure that you don't land them right on top of the boss. You want the sticks of dynamite to land next to the boss. If they land right on top of the boss, he may throw them back at you. It only takes a few sticks of TNT to finish that guy off, and we're going to head back to San Joaquinto to use the doctor and buy some more ammo, because there's still one more action scene ahead. You could probably beat that green general without the TNT sticks, but make sure that you have some dynamite for the next boss. He can also be defeated without the dynamite, but it's going to be way easier if you have it. So we'll head back up here to the gun shop, and once again max out our ammo. If we're pretty close to our maximum amount of ammo, we should be in good shape for the entire last mission, and we probably won't have to come back here, although we will have the opportunity to do so if we need it. And that's the most ammunition I can carry on silver bullets, so now we'll max out our TNT, and then spend whatever remaining money we have on standard bullets. We will use the standard bullets a little bit in Mission 8, but for the most part we're just going to be using silver bullets and TNT moving forward. The one place where the silver bullets don't seem to matter that much are in the 3D shooting sections, and there's only going to be one more of those before the game is over. So we'll make our way to the final gate, and beyond this is Butch's hideout. And the final mission as well. But we need to finish this one, or it'll be back to the beginning of Mission 7, and this one is not easy. Not by a long shot. So once again, watch out for the three C's. Calvary, Cannonballs, and Caltrops. They're all over this place, just like they were in the last few action zones. We'll make our way down here across the bottom, and oof, we took a cannonball there. That's what happens if you get hit by a cannonball. It deals a ton of damage. So watch out for that. Make your way up the left side here. We're going to want to take out the enemies from across the caltrops before we go up there. And it is possible to weave between those two mines, but you'll take less damage if you just walk through the caltrops than you would if you accidentally hit a mine. So it may be safer to just take the one damage and walk through those caltrops, assuming you're not at very critical amount of life. Once you get up here, this is the boss's room, and if you have the TNT, this boss is very easy. You want to come up to these boxes, and we're going to use them for cover, but you can throw the dynamite over the boxes. It only takes five sticks to kill this guy, but you want to remember, don't throw it right at the boss, or this will happen. He can throw it back at you. So just throw your TNT next to this guy, and he won't be able to shoot you through the boxes. And with that, we have finally completed the very long Mission 7. That was a tough one. Beyond this is the final mission, and in this one, it's going to mix up the styles of gameplay. We're going to experience all the different styles in this one, so get ready for Mission 8, the final battle. It seems like an entire army wasn't enough to stop the Lone Ranger. Cavendish is going to have to try harder if he wants to beat us. That guy's gonna need like a tank or something. Well, before we head into Mission 8, we'll give a little high o silver and get our password from Tonto. This will be the final password in the game. So snap a quick picture of it and prepare for the final battle. Before you make your way to Cavendish's hideout, you may want to stop back at San Joaquinto and top off your bullets. I recommend that you have at least 40 clips of silver bullets before moving forward, because once you get deep into the hideout, you're not going to be able to go back. Alright, 48, that should be fine. We're only two clips short of the maximum. So we're going to head over here, and it looks like we just have to fight some outlaws, but this is an entire side-scrolling action scene, and a tough one at that. The good news is that compared to the Eagle Cliffs that we played back in Mission 5, the jumps aren't as tough in this one, but there are a lot of enemies, so you want to be tactical. Try to shoot them from far away. We have the long-barreled gun now, so we should be able to hit a lot of these guys at range. 
make your way up to the top. Basically, we want to get all the way to the top, and then we're going to work our way over to the right and back down again. So that's sort of the path that we need to take through this one. So we're going to keep climbing up. Lots of platforms here. Those ones are stable, but there are a few of those unstable platforms that are coming up. So watch out for these ones that are of a different color over here. Remember that if you fall down below, that is instant death. And although this is just the beginning of Mission 8 and probably not the worst place to die, it's still not the most fun thing. Once you get over here, we're going to drop down to this level and then head across to the right, then back over to the left. That's the easiest way to avoid the enemies in that spot. Then you can just drop straight down here, and there's these strange bridges. Whenever you walk on it, it seems normal, but whenever you jump, it has a strange springiness to it. Bouncing on the bridges can mess up your aim, so I recommend shooting the enemies from the stable side of the bridge before you cross it. This guy will drop a heart for us. Of course, you can probably tell that from the way that he looks. And then we'll jump to take out that enemy and keep making our way up the far right side. The end of this one is in the top right corner, so that's where we're headed to. Take out these enemies from afar. There's a couple tricky jumps over here, but if you fall down, you won't get set back very far. Head up to the top. We should be able to jump to take that guy out. Just shoot him right through the shins. Very uncomfortable looking. And then we'll walk over this way. There's some platforms that'll fall out from under you there, so watch out for them. And then you just need to make your way to the top. There's another falling platform and a guy that'll give you some hearts, so that's nice at the very end. But that is the last part of the final cliffs. Ahead is Butch's hideout. This is your last chance to go back to San Joaquinto to buy ammo or use the doctor. Make sure to do that if you need some more bullets. In here we have an overhead action stage, and this one has enemies that come at you on speeding rail cars. You'll want to make your way up the right side, but don't linger on the tracks for very long. If you crash into one of those rail cars, you'll take a bunch of damage. Head all the way to the top. Up here, there's a bit of a crossfire when a lot of rail cars come at you. It can be tough to avoid taking damage there. Just keep making your way across the top, and over here you'll find an enemy that's wearing red, but he's throwing dynamite, and he will drop a heart for you if you need it, so make sure to grab that before moving forward, and then start heading downward. We're going to take a shot here while these enemies are off screen so that we can walk the bullet right into them without them seeing it coming, so use that technique, and that's a good way to take out all four of the enemies down here. Money's not really important anymore. Once we get through this, we're not going to be able to go back to the store. We're almost through this short area, and let's face it, if you were able to survive the overhead zones in Mission 7, this one should be a piece of cake. There's a few enemies guarding the door down here, but this large building, this is it. This is where we're headed. There's no enemies inside here, but there is a stairway in the upper left corner. And that will take us to the final 3D maze. You're going to end up in a long hallway that heads east. The easiest way to navigate this maze is to just follow this hallway all the way to the end. Whenever you have to fight enemies, as soon as the enemies are defeated, you need to reorient yourself to the east and go all the way to the end of the hallway. Then you're going to go around a loop and you'll follow another hallway to the south. Whenever you fight enemies now, when you're done fighting them, you need to reorient yourself so that you're facing south. You'll see a little indicator of which direction you're facing next to that red enemy indicator. So right now we're at north, we want to quickly switch back to south, and head all the way to the end of this hallway. When you get to the end of the south hallway, it's just going to loop around and you'll be able to follow that next hallway to the goal, so it's really that simple. Just make sure that whenever you fight the enemies that you immediately reorient yourself to the direction that you need to be going. So when you're in the east hall, you fight enemies, quickly switch back to the east. And since we're in the south, we're going to hit down here since we are facing north. And now we'll just follow this hall, just follow it along. And that's it. We're now in a side-scrolling zone. The good news is that there's an enemy here that drops a heart, so we'll be able to use that to refill our health. Jump up onto this moving platform and use it to reach the heart. And if you need to get more health than that, 
you can go back through this door, which will cause that enemy to respawn, and he'll drop the heart again. If you were using standard bullets in the 3D maze, which is probably a good idea so you'll save your silvers for this area, make sure that you switch back to silver bullets when you get in here. You are definitely going to need them in these side-scrolling areas. As we head down these stairs, there's a new hazard to contend with, earthquakes. So if you feel the ground shake and it starts to drop out from under you, you need to jump off of the area that you're standing on. If you fall down into one of those pits, that is instant death. So watch out for these enemies, but make sure that you don't fall into a hole. That would be a total disaster. Take out this guy from above. You can just shoot an angled shot down at him. Work your way over to the right. Those spikes can damage you, but it's not as bad as falling into a hole, especially considering that there's an enemy at the end here that drops a heart. Once you climb up these stairs, there's no more earthquakes to deal with, but there are conveyor belts and spike traps, so you may want to wait for those spikes to extend before you jump across, and these conveyor belts will slow you down, which makes it a lot harder to avoid the falling stalactites that come from the ceiling. This part's tricky, you just want to move through it as quickly as you can, although you should wait for the big spike traps to pop up before you jump across them. But you don't want to spend a lot of time in the area where the stalactites are dropping down, you'll just end up taking a ton of damage there. Up here we enter some kind of boiler room. There's lots of pipes and very futuristic type machinery up here. Watch out for these crushers, wait until they're retracting to go up and make sure to take out those two enemies before you go under the last one. Head over here to the right. That lava can damage you, but it won't be instant death, so if you touch it, you won't instantly die, but it will hurt you, so you do want to avoid it. Make sure that you go on the top tier up here. The bottom tier looks like a good way to go, but there are some platforms that will drop out from under you, and then you'll end up in a trap below, so you don't want to do that. Instead, just try to walk past these steam vents, and you'll notice that the ground has a bit of a conveyor belt property to it, so it may try to move you around, which makes it harder to avoid those steams. Just do your best to survive, and then head down here and jump across this platform. That guy below will try to shoot upwards at you, and is pretty dangerous, so once you kill the enemy that drops the heart on top of the platform, you'll want to drop down and quickly take him out. Over here there are multiple doors, you want to take the second one from the left. The other ones are all traps. If you need to get some health back, you can leave and head back to where the enemy was that drops the big heart. He will have respawned and you'll be able to use him to get more health. So make sure that you are completely filled up before you move forward. Every area in Cavendish's hideout can be difficult, and you don't want to die or you'll have to start the whole thing over. From back before those cliffs. Once your health is maxed out, make your way back to the second door from the left, and we're going to be going into another overhead section. In fact, the entire rest of the game until we get to the final boss will be an overhead section, so this is the last stretch. There's a bunch of conveyor belts up here, but not a lot of enemies near them, so they won't really mess you up too much. Take out this guy on the other side, and make sure to take out his friend as well. And just keep working your way up here, and then head to the left. We're going to work our way around these boxes, taking out any enemies in our way. Try to watch for where they might pop up. And as we weave our way around here, you may want to take a shot when there's an enemy off screen and then walk your bullet right into them. That strategy still works just great. In this green area, there's flamethrowers that we have to deal with. Yeah, don't ask me how they made those, but Butch Cavendish has some crazy traps going on in his hideout. There's an enemy in the lower left corner that can drop a heart, but make sure that you don't get hit by his dynamite. And as we exit this area, if you need to get some health back, you can head back down in here to kill that dynamite guy again, but be ready to contend with the enemies that will be waiting for you in front of the door. Once you're in good health, we're going to make our way through another one of these green areas with the flamethrowers. Take out the enemies from afar, should be able to get a good shot on this guy from over here. And just work your way around the flamethrowers. The ones in this room all move in a clockwise pattern, so just make sure that you walk with them and not against them. There's an enemy right there that drops some hearts. Of course, you can go back there and kill him again if you need to refill your health. 
Up here in this room, the bullets will ricochet off the walls. You can try to use that to your advantage, but it mostly just makes it easier for the enemies to hit you. Head up through here, we have another ricocheting bullet area. Try to take out these guys and make your way around. You can shoot and then sort of run away in this area. That's the best way to approach these guys instead of trying to bounce bullets off the wall. And then there's an enemy at the very end that drops a heart, so you know what you can do with that. Head back in here and kill him again for another heart if you need it. Up here there's some boilers that will belch fire at you, so wait for them to finish firing before you move forward. You can shoot this enemy from between the boilers, and then just keep working your way around to the left. Of course that enemy in the upper corner throws dynamite, but he also drops a heart for you, so that's nice. Keep your gun reloaded, and we're going to head up the final hallway, but the final boss is not next. Nope, there's another set of bosses first. Stick to the left side as you walk up this hallway, and in this room, it's the Machine Gun Twins. Stay down here at the bottom and wait for the twins to come all the way down, then you want to head over into this position. From here, you should be able to take out the twin on the left. Just keep shooting at him, wait for his invincibility frames to wear off, and then shoot him again. He'll go down after a few shots. Then you can stay in the same exact spot, turn to the right, and take out the twin wearing the red suit. He can actually throw sticks of dynamite at you if you get too close, so you definitely don't want to get close to this guy. But if you position yourself correctly here, you'll be able to defeat both of these enemies without taking hardly any damage. If you did take some damage though, the final boss is next, so you may want to risk it and come down here and try to kill the enemy that drops the big heart. There are some regular enemies that we'll have to contend with down here, so that could be a danger. The last thing you want to do is get killed and not even fight Cavendish, but if you go into Cavendish's room without much health left, you're going to get annihilated. So make sure you have full health and then head up into the final boss's room. The boss is going to come onto the screen from the right side, and first there's going to be a gun turret, so you want to jump right over that turret, stand on this orange platform, crouch down, and take out that gun. Then you're looking for this orange smokestack that appears in the upper right corner. You're counting how many times it's appeared, so that's the second time, third time, and after the fourth time, it's go time. So when it starts going back, you're going to head to the right side of the screen. There's some steam that'll damage you here, but just jump right up and get onto this ledge right below Cavendish. Make sure you're on this ledge so that if you get pushed over to the left, you don't fall off. Then you're just going to shoot directly up at him while avoiding the bullets that he shoots downwards. With his machine gun broken, Cavendish has a few words for the Lone Ranger. We've caused you so much trouble? You started this, Cavendish. You started this when you killed my brother. Say your prayers, Butch. When the boss finishes monologuing, quickly make your way over here to the left side. Like many of the bosses in this game, whenever you shoot at him, it makes him want to jump. So we're going to fight him in a similar way that we fought the Fire Eater boss. Except the big difference with Cavendish is that you need to try to stay crouching. So you'll be switching sides and shooting at him, but you need to keep crouched down because sometimes Cavendish will get off some shots, and most of them will go over your head. If you have enough bullets, you'll want to just keep shooting pretty quickly. He does get invincibility frames, but you just want to drown him in a hail of bullets. So just keep switching sides, shoot fast, and Cavendish will just harmlessly jump back and forth over your head, and eventually he'll be cut down by your bullets. And that's it. We've done it. We've beaten the Lone Ranger. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. As we unlock the cell at the back of Butch's hideout, it looks like the president is totally fine. And that is really good news. He says thank you very much and that he'll never forget us, and well, you better not forget us, Mr. President, because saving you took a lot of effort, and now we're going to need a pardon for just so many crimes. I don't think we committed all of those crimes, some of them were committed by an imposter, but let's just say that we committed most of those crimes. And we did them to save you, Mr. President, so you know, maybe return the favor a little bit, that'd be nice. 
As the Lone Ranger rides off into the distance, the president asks himself, who was that masked man? Well, you can just call me Roy Rogers. yippee ki -yay. The Lone Ranger saved the president and got even with Butch Cavendish. And let's face it, I think we've got a little bit more than even with that guy. But thanks to the Lone Ranger, justice and peace have been restored to the West. And by justice and peace, you know, we killed all the bad guys. Still, his journey is never finished. And never will be as long as we need money to pay for medical bills or more bullets. But that's just how it goes in the Old West. If you've got money in your pocket and a Y chromosome in your DNA, you are fair game for the Lone Ranger. So whether you're an outlaw, a warrior, a ninja, or just a regular dude, if you see that white horse a-coming, you should definitely run. And with that, we'll roll the final credits. This is a really great game. I think the one thing that holds it back is the lack of checkpoints. If they put a checkpoint after each of the different action stages, or maybe gave you a way to just get your password, I think that would have made this game a lot more accessible. But as it stands, it's still a lot of fun to play, and is a game that should not be missed. In a lot of ways, this game feels like the natural evolution of the game type that was started with the adventures of Bayou Billy. In that game, you have a beat-em-up type action, you have 3D shooting where you can use the zapper, and you also have the driving scenes. In this one, the overhead action, side-scrolling action, 3D shooting, that mix seems to gel together a little bit better, and so I think it makes for a more cohesive gameplay experience. There is a lot of weird stuff in this game, especially those ninjas, but you know what they say, it's a little wild and a little strange when you make your home out on the range, so start your horse and come along, but you can't get a ride if you can't hold on. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally beat the Lone Ranger and return peace to the Old West. If it did, make sure to give it a like, and make sure to subscribe for more videos because there will always be more presidential kidnappings to thwart. And that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.